In the last two lessons, you've learned all about how to edit your project in UEFN. Now it's time to see how it looks in Fortnite. Not only can we preview our project in Fortnite through a playtest, but we can also edit the project inside of Fortnite and all of those changes will sync up with the editor. Take a look at the top of the editor where the launch session button is. If you click the three dots next to it, you can see the session options, live edit and auto start game. Live edit lets you load a Fortnite creative session and have it be connected to the editor so you can edit the project as you would in creative normally and have those changes reflected back. For example, if I raise this prop in the session, I can look back at the editor and see it's updated to keep things in sync. It's important to remember that not everything supports this live editing. In those cases, you'll have to push your changes from the Fortnite client to the editor. Auto Start Game will start the game when you launch a session instead of putting you directly into edit mode. This is good to enable when you want to play test, but if you just want to edit, you can disable this for now. Disable Auto Start Game but leave Live Edit on and launch your session. This will validate your project and connect you to the session in a new Fortnite client. You can run around in the level in edit mode, start the game, and use all of the normal creative functionality. While in a session, you may make some edits in the editor, like adding a new prop or moving things around. In these cases, you'll need to push your changes from the editor to the client by clicking the Push Changes button at the top. Another great feature of these live edit sessions is the ability to invite anyone from your team into the session with you, so you can have multiple people editing the same project. This is a great way to speed up collaboration. Another way to collaborate is through Unreal Revision Control, where someone on your creator team can edit the project and upload their changes, then you can download the edits to the island yourself. To get out of edit mode, you can either start your game or close a session. Starting your game will disable the live edit feature and let you play test as you would when the project starts normally. Now that you know how to enter a session, we can start looking at some of UEFN's cool features like landscaping for level creation. Landscaping mode lets you adjust the terrain of your island by creating mountains, painting textures and much more. To get started with landscaping mode, create a blank level by clicking File New Level and selecting the blank template. It's also a good practice to save this new level immediately and you can rename it Landscaping Level. To enter landscaping mode, click the Mode Select menu and choose Landscape or use the default shortcut Shift plus 2. To use the landscaping tools, you'll need a landscape to edit. You can change the material and size of the landscape when creating it. To learn more about these settings, you can check the online documentation. Landscape mode has three menus. Manage is where you can create or import a landscape and remove parts of one. For now, click Create to generate a landscape. Once created, you'll see a new grassy landscape in your world and a landscape item in the outliner. The Sculpt menu will open with a variety of tools to edit the landscape. The default tool is the Sculpt tool. Move your mouse over the landscape to see a widget appear. By holding left click with the Sculpt tool, you will raise the terrain. You can hold Shift and left click to lower it. If you make a sharp mountain but want it to be more flat for players, use the Flatten tool. Bring your mouse near the peak and hold left click to flatten the terrain beneath the widget. To flatten things back to the normal level, start on the ground and hold left click while moving over the mountain. Combining the Sculpt and Flatten tools can help create interesting landscapes. You can also adjust brush type, strength, size and more for each tool to fine-tune your landscape. The last menu is the Paint section, where you can select different layers of the material used in the landscape to paint different textures across the world. Holding left click to paint, you'll see your first layer is a dirt type layer. Shift plus left click paints the default texture back over. If you make a mistake and want to restart, Right click a layer and select Clear Layer to remove all of that layer from the landscape. Landscapes work just like normal islands, so to play them, return to selection mode, place any props you want and launch a session. Note that this landscape was created in a separate map or level from the one initially made when the project was created. You can only have one active level at a time, so you'll see an alert when launching the playtest, asking if you want to play the default level or the current one. To change the default level, select the Game Feature Data Asset in the Content Browser and change which level is selected as the default map. Launching the session now, you'll see your landscape. 
If you don't want to spend time creating the perfect landscape or prefer focusing on game making, you can use the template islands, which offer great pre-built islands. Now that we've learned about landscape, let's explore modeling mode, where you can create your own accessories within the editor. Modeling in UEFN can be a powerful way to create custom objects in your project and is one way you can add new experiences to your island. Let's create a basic barrel to explore the modeling tools available. Start by entering modeling mode using the mode menu near the top of the editor or by using the associated shortcut. Once in modeling mode, you'll see various modeling tools available under the create menu. You can create objects like stairs or spars. For your barrel, let's use a cylinder. After selecting the cylinder option, settings for the cylinder you are creating will appear. You can adjust the height, radius, radial slices and more. For this barrel, let's increase the radial slices all the way up and set the height to 150. You can choose a material to apply to the cylinder, which will be blank for now, and specify where the asset should be saved. Click, accept and navigate to the barrel's location in the content browser. Rename it to SM Barrel, with SM meaning static mesh. There are a few other tools that can help make this look more like a barrel. In the model menu, select the polygroup edit tool and then select the top of the cylinder. There are many things you can do with the selected part of the cylinder, like using the inset tool to create an outer and inner part of the barrel. You can then select the inner part of the barrel and, with the extrude tool, either extend it outwards or push it inwards. Instead of using the viewport to perform this action, you can change the distance mode to fixed and set a specific number. For example, a distance of negative 120 would raise the inside of the barrel by 30 units, as the entire barrel's height is 150. Once you click Accept, you'll now have a hollow barrel. With that, you've modeled your first static mesh inside the editor. The modeling tools in UEFN are incredibly powerful, so feel free to keep experimenting. You may have noticed that the barrel has a default checkered pattern on it. This is because no material was selected when it was created. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to create a material to make the barrel appear more barrel-like. Goodbye, see you in the next lesson.